Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton action and beyond. This week, we discover what makes Chris and Gabby Adcock tick as we sit down with Britain's golden badminton couple. And we find out how Swiss badminton is taking the sport to the next level in the country. I'm proud to announce on behalf of Yonex that Chris and Gabby will be the ambassadors of the Legends Vision, helping bring badminton to the forefront in the UK. It was an absolute honour firstly to be part of the, invited to be part of the Legend Vision by Yonex. Um, the four guys are such inspirational characters and, and badminton players that to ask to be a part was, was amazing. And I think our part as ambassadors is obviously to, to kind of take the baton from the guys and obviously take it towards the Great Britain and the UK and try and get as many people to play badminton that don't and inspire the next generation of badminton players. Launched in 2015, the Yonex Legends Vision is an initiative aimed at raising the profile of badminton worldwide through legends of the game. Peter Gader, Taufik Hidayat, Lee Chongwei and Lin Dan in a series of promotional events. 2016 will see a network of Yonex badminton stars coming together in support of the four legends and earlier this year, Chris and Gabby Adcock were appointed as ambassadors to the UK. It's a fitting role for the world number eight mixed doubles pair who are idolised at home. As athletes, and we have a job to, to do and we, we have to fulfil our role well and I think that if we can get as many kids inspired to play the sport, if it's coming along and watching me and Chris, we'll be doing events. So um, yeah, they can get up close and personal with us and we'll teach them a little bit about badminton and get to watch, the, they get to watch how we train. So um, if we can inspire one, two or however many to pick up a racket and start playing, then we feel like we're doing our job quite well. We were recently in Birmingham for the All England Championships and while we took in the excitement of the world's oldest competition, Badminton Unlimited also grabbed the chance to catch up with one of badminton's favourite couples. We've played very well here the last few years um, and I think the crowd have a lot to do with that and you can just feel that the, the crowd is so behind you wanting to win and you get, you, it just it lifts you that extra couple of percent more. We, we want to go into every time we play and win obviously but it's very special um, stepping onto court here at the All England. The British favourites were not able to go all the way this year they did, however, manage to go one step further than previous attempts by reaching the semi-final stage of the All England for the first time. We come here every year really excited, really looking forward to it. It's our favourite tournament. Um, it's got such great history behind it. Of course, it would mean a lot um, winning the All England and hopefully one time in our career we will do, or maybe even more. After an impressive triumph at the Dubai World Super Series Finals last year, the semi-final finish in Birmingham was a good start to their 2016 World Super Series campaign. We knew that on the day like we can beat any pair, it's just obviously getting that consistency level high enough um, all the time to do that. And, and uh, in Dubai it seemed to all um, come together really well. We played the best badminton that we've ever played. Um, and yeah, we were obviously very happy with the win, but we felt we had improved, definitely. We feel like we, we are improving and keep improving and we want to improve a lot more up until Rio as well. But yeah, it was, it was an exciting year to end on such a high. The Adcocks made British badminton history when they stepped on top of the podium in Dubai last year. With the Olympics approaching, the win sent a loud message to the rest in the field. Chris and Gabby are not to be discounted. The thing is about the mixed doubles, we know it's very wide open. There's lots of really good pairs who've been performing really well, but um, we've really put ourselves in with a shout. It's, it's an Olympic year, so to slingshot us into the Olympic year with the win in Dubai, it's, it puts us in a great position. Currently qualifying fifth in the mixed doubles race to Rio rankings, the husband and wife pair are in a strong position for a place at the upcoming Summer Games in August. At the minute we're, we're, we're trying to get that top four seed in. Um, we're not too far off, but obviously it's very difficult. We have to be hitting more finals um, of the big events. It gives you an advantage that you're not going to run into one of the other top four pairs, but um, <clears throat> I think the way the mix has been going recently that there's a lot of very good pairs outside the top, uh, top four anyway. 
So, um, of course, it'd be nice to be seeded and obviously nice to go in knowing you're in the top four. Like Gabby said, we're in a strong position at the minute. We need to back up a few more results. Chris and Gabby are looking forward to the partnership's debut appearance at the Games. And, like all athletes, the dream is to go for gold. And the pair believe the key to their success is simple. Enjoy their badminton. We know that we're very good players and we know that when we play well that we can beat everybody in the world. Um, but we just focus at one day at a time, one game at a time and, and just enjoy, enjoy ourselves. I think we found in Dubai and most titles that we've won, um, when we're enjoying ourselves and, and it makes us play better. Yeah, I think we've really matured in, as our training levels got high and, and um, yeah, it's coming together and we've got a lot more to improve as well, which is also the exciting thing. Chris and Gabby Adcock are on the upward trend and if they can keep the pace, Britain's golden couple could realise their full potential on sport's biggest stage. Coffee. ロマンス。うん。バリ。ショッピング。It's time to test your badminton knowledge. In this week's trivia, we want to know who won the Yonex Sunrise India Open three consecutive times. Need a clue? It's a mixed doubles duo. We tell you the answer after the break. When we return, we visit the capital of Switzerland to find out how the Swiss are developing badminton in the country. Before the break, we wanted to know who has won the Yonex Sunrise India Open three consecutive times. The answer is Tontawi Ahmad and Liliana Natsir. The Yonex Sunrise India Open was first held in 2008. The event was classed a BWF Super Series tournament in 2011, and that was the first time the Indonesian mixed doubles pair stood on top of the podium in Delhi. It was also the partnership's first World Super Series title. The pair held on to the mixed doubles crown the next two years, making them the only ones to win in India three successive times. The ninth edition of the Yonex Sunrise India Open takes place this week and with the world's top players in action, be prepared to witness great badminton from the Siri Fort Stadium. Come August, the Rio Olympics will offer the ultimate stage for the globe's best badminton players. With sport's biggest prize up for grabs and the world's attention firmly placed on this competition, Earning a place to be part of the Olympic experience is a commendable feat itself. For growing badminton nations like Switzerland, participation is the main objective. Winning medals is a future goal and it isn't high on the priority list for now. For them, it's about getting their players to a standard where they can qualify for the Olympics. We want to have players at the next Olympics also, so we have a lot of focus on, on, on young players we're committed to doing to getting there. Uh, so we are working quite hard on that without forgetting that it's a system that should produce continuously, not only for one Olympics or the next Olympics, but we want to produce players on a continuous basis. And that that is the, the big the big challenge in this and that's why we have this centralized system. Our cameras were in the country's capital, Bern, recently to report on how the Swiss national team is working towards their ambitions. 
It began in August 2014, when Swiss Badminton enlisted the services of experienced Danish coach John Dinesen. Once at the helm, he led a revamp of the infrastructure and helped educate the administrators and players on what's needed to take the sport to the next level in the country. My role here in, in Switzerland is, is actually trying to, to rebuild the system a little bit. Uh, we are trying to get it a little bit more professional than it has been and we are trying to, to build the training environment on a, on a highly professional level. And that's my, my, my biggest role right now and of course taking player, care of the players on, on the daily practice. And then also in the, in the structure in general in, in Switzerland and the education stuff also. The whole mentality we have to change a little bit, the whole culture about what is performance sport, what is high performance sport, is a big difference. And uh, until now it's been defined a little bit how you think it is in Switzerland, but actually it's, it's the international uh, arena that decides what is high performance sport in badminton and we have to, to, to go in that direction. So we are trying to change the whole mindset on, on these things. That's one thing. The next thing is of course the resources, uh, the infrastructure. Swiss badminton has adopted a centralized system where the national players come together to train. At the same time, they keep a close eye on junior camps held throughout the year for promising talents. There are also regional high performance centers being set up across the nation and they hope this can help in the development of the players. It is important to support and encourage the development of the regional high performance centers. We want to improve the existing structure so that a good system will be in place and that will benefit the players in the long run. The players of the Swiss national team have definitely progressed in the right direction over the last few years, especially with regards to the dedication and commitment to the sport. From time to time, they show good results, especially the juniors. The current Switzerland national team comprises a compact 12-man squad that trains almost every day. Although there are also young talents being groomed, numbers are low due to the perceived lack of opportunities for professional badminton players in the country. Swiss badminton is working hard to reverse this perception, and they're starting to see progress. I feel proud to be part of the Swiss national team. The main goal is to get to this team and then try to stay in the squad. It's an honour to play international badminton for a small country. The sessions that we are, we are doing here are actually we are trying to, to get as much practice in as possible uh, because we need that. They, they, their base is not, is not strong enough so we are trying to, to make their base a lot better so we are doing a lot of basic stuff. The players have big challenges here also because there's a lot of pressure on them from from the, the, the normal society in Switzerland, which is really focused on education. And we are, we are trying to convince them that it's, uh, if they really want to, to uh, commit to badminton, we are willing to commit to them. Nowadays, it's structured much better. There's a physical coach who pushes us to our limits every time. It's challenging, but the organized system has been the main difference. With a solid foundation in place, Badminton in Switzerland has been given a major boost. As long as everyone plays their part, a bright future is on the horizon. My hope is actually that, that badminton will be, uh, at one point, will be recognized as a professional sport in, in Switzerland in general. Through the, through the effort that the players are, are showing, also showing Swiss Olympic, who is the main funding partner here also, together with, with a couple of other funding partners. I, our aim is to show them that, that badminton is not just something that is happening on the side, it's something that uh, wants to push forward and wants to, to push the limits. Success can never be achieved without hard work and sacrifice. So judging by the clear direction and sheer desire, it'll only be a matter of time before Switzerland badminton reaps its rewards. It was another fantastic showcase of international badminton last weekend at the Sky City New Zealand Open.
Action on finals day opened with the women's singles as top seed Sung Ji Hyun of Korea took on Japan's Aya Ohori. Sung, already a winner this year at the Syed Modi International Badminton Championships, was the overwhelming favorite to take home another Grand Prix gold crown against a relatively inexperienced Ohori. The Korean didn't disappoint, defeating her East Asian rival in straight games, 21-15, 21-17, the final score. Mixed doubles was up next, and Malaysia's reinvigorated duo Chan Peng Soon and Go Liu Ying was up against China's Deng Su Wei and Li In Hui. Only back together last year after an 11-month break, Chan and Go are working hard to get back to the form that once saw them ranked as high as third in the world. And after 45 minutes of play, the Southeast Asians made another significant step to that ambition. The Malaysian pair edging past their opponents, 21-19, 22-20. China had another one of their own contesting on finals day when Huang Yuxiang stepped on court to face Richie Takeshita of Japan in the men's singles final. Having been pipped to the title in India earlier in the year, Huang was on a mission not to miss out this time around. The world number 51 winning the match with a convincing performance, 21-12, 21-17 read the final score. Another Japan versus Korea matchup followed in the women's doubles final, with Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota taking on Chang Yena and Lee Sohee. The Korean pair were looking to consolidate their qualifying position for the Rio Olympics with a win here. However, it was anything but a straightforward victory. In a repeat of their meeting at last year's Macau Open, Fukushima and Hirota were once again the winners, with the Japanese duo cruising to a 21-13, 21-16 victory. Men's doubles Anga Pratama and Riki Karanda Suwadi were Indonesia's sole representatives on finals day when they squared off against Ko Sung Hyun and Shin Bik Chol of Korea. Former world champions Ko and Shin proved too strong for their Indonesian opponents and were ahead throughout the match. Pratama and Suwadi's challenge was taken apart in 37 minutes. Ko and Shin triumphant with the final score 21-18-21-14. After the break, we meet Hadia Hosni, a player from Egypt who is also a coach and an advocate for the sport. At my school, my teacher, uh, who was uh, Coach Temer Rafat, he was in the national team for badminton in Egypt. And um, he was the one who told me, why don't you come and try badminton? I told him, what is badminton? So we went after school to the club and uh, played badminton. I practiced uh, just three weeks with him. I went to the nationals under 12 years old and uh, I took uh, the third place. Uh, so from, from here started my journey in badminton. I loved it a lot. Born in Cairo, the capital city of Egypt, badminton has been a big part of Hadia Hosni's life since that eventful day some 15 years ago. Her journey has taken her to two Olympic Games, Beijing and London, and she is vying for her third appearance in Rio de Janeiro. Hadia's first international title was in 2010 at the African Badminton Championships, where she was crowned African champion in women's singles. I was the first Arabian uh, to win the African title, which is an honor for me to be um, the African champion in 2010. It was really overwhelming happiness uh, and I was very happy and I didn't believe that I got uh, first place in uh, Africa. Badminton Unlimited tracked down Hadia Hosni when she was in Bangkok recently for the Princess Siri Vanavari Thailand Masters. She spoke to us about her badminton journey as a player and an advocate for the sport. 
Badminton is not popular at all in Egypt, uh, though after the last Olympic Games it started being more popular, uh, especially after I founded in my city Hadzi Hosni Badminton Academy, which is especially for the um, kids, but also uh, elder players. It's not, of course, like football. Um, there are a lot of people, you, you tell them badminton, they don't know what is it. So we are trying to, to make it more popular by founding more academies and more clubs uh, for badminton. With limited resources and inadequate coaching in Egypt, Hadia had to look overseas if she wanted to take her badminton to the next level. She first went to Europe to gain that much-needed training and experience. The overseas stint saw her inching closer to one of her dreams. Hadia made history when she became the first Egyptian badminton player to compete in an Olympic Games. Just days before the start of the Games in Beijing, the then 20-year-old received a call-up to participate in women's singles. It was an answered prayer and a dream come true. I really was very happy when I knew this. And um, my, my grandmother actually, she asked me before, what do you want me to pray for you? And I, I told her I want to qualify to Beijing. And by that time I was number 11 in the qualification list, in the waiting list. And actually she told me, uh, I will pray for you and you will qualify. Four years later, Hadia made her second women's singles appearance in London, this time on her own merit. She was the only player out of the four representatives from Africa to do so. The shuttler felt more was needed to be done to develop the sport in her country and Africa if there were to be more players competing at the highest level. In 2013, the resourceful young woman set up a badminton academy in Cairo and took up an ambassadorial role promoting the racket sport to women in Africa and the Middle East. In 2014, I was the BWF ambassador uh, for the Peace and Sport Cup in uh, Dubai. It was the first such event just for women. And uh, from this, uh, the African uh, committee thought that they can have me as representative uh, for the African committee in the BWF uh, Women Committee. So we started this year having uh, more uh, umpires courses and coaching courses for only women. Uh, in the African countries. The Egyptian is also gearing up for the 2016 Rio Olympics. This time around, she'll be contesting the mixed doubles event. As the highest ranked pair in Africa, Hadia and partner Abdulrahman Kashkal are on course for a place to compete in Brazil. Last year, the duo enjoyed podium finishes in several African tournaments, and they recently grabbed gold at the 2016 Uganda International. The Egyptian mixed tandem is currently ranked 57th in the world and Hadia is not satisfied with just being the best in her continent. Not only the top African players, but we have to be uh, top 50 world ranked. Uh, so hopefully we try to keep uh, this and uh, do even better to qualify as the highest ranked uh, African mixed doubles players. The 27-year-old is currently well outside the qualifying positions for a place in women's singles. She needs to better her race to rear ranking by more than 10 places for a spot in Brazil. It's a long shot, but Hadia is not one to give up. She's determined to fight till the end of the qualifying period. I think it would be the first Egyptian and Arabian and African player to qualify for the third time uh, Olympic Games. Especially if I made it in women's singles, it will be much better. I hope that uh, we keep uh, trying until the end of uh, April. And uh, whatever comes, um, I think we will all be happy uh, for even trying. And we will be much happier if we uh, represented our country and uh, Africa in uh, Olympic Games uh, Rio 2016. Hadia Hosni, motivated and resolute. Coach, ambassador and player. The future for the Cairo-born shuttler has never looked better. Before we go, let's see how the international circuit looks as we check out the Badminton Unlimited calendar. Get connected with us. Log on to these websites for videos and photos and get the latest news and information on all things badminton. 
and visit our YouTube channel badmintonworld.tv for tournament highlights and past matches, as well as all episodes of Badminton Unlimited. All the best badminton clips are just a click away. Next week, we chat with India's current poster boy for badminton, Kidambi Srikanth. See you next week.